Okay, let's start. Action. How can God speak? Gods do not speak. Today, if you harden your heart, you will not enter my rest. The moment I lie down, windpipes will choke. Desperation, always bloodshot eyes, looking like a drunkard. I started hearing a voice, as if somebody is speaking to me. She immediately told me, Hey, God is speaking to you. Jesus is speaking to you. My name is Raghu Raman, popularly known as Raghu. I live in Bangalore, married with two daughters. I'm a full-time missionary doing the ministry work with the Catholic Church. As my name suggests, I was born and brought up in a very orthodox Brahmin family. I was born and brought up in Chennai. That's my hometown. But now I live in Bangalore. The Brahmins are supposed to be the highest order in the Hindu spirituality. Having a wonderful childhood, there was no special need for search for God. It was all a part of my life. So when I finished my education, I graduated in chemistry. Around the age of 22, I came to Bangalore to take up a job here. When I came into Bangalore, I was exposed to all the pleasures of life and I was living a, a normal life like any other youngster who do it at that age. That's when I met a Catholic girl. We got into a relationship. This family accepted me very well. And our relationship started blooming in the normal worldly way. So I was in Bangalore for about two, two and a half years. Then. I was transferred to another town. After my period of maybe one year and about three months, I was moved back to Bangalore. When I came in back into Bangalore, I noticed a huge transformation in this family. The same family who is with me as high are now raising their hands up and saying hallelujah and praise the Lord. And to make things difficult for me, they started proclaiming Jesus as the only Lord and Savior to me. That was something that I could not accept. So at one point of time, this girl told me, you're trying to defend everything intellectually from my mind. If she said, if God has given you this intellect, he will use the same intellect to reveal the truth to you. When I was in Bangalore, I was affected by a sickness called bronchitis asthma. My problem was very, very severe. To breathe normally, I have to be in a vertical position. I cannot lie down and sleep. The moment I lie down, windpipes will choke. And I cannot breathe normally. I suffered from this problem for three and a half years. Desperation always bloodshot eyes, looking like a drunkard, but because of the lack of sleep, lack of rest. Every night when I doze off in the chair for a few hours, I started hearing a voice, as if somebody is speaking to me. So I thought I was hallucinating, imagining this voice. When I wake up, nobody is there. But what was troubling me is, even that little sleep which I used to get sitting in the chair 
was getting disturbed now. But the voice which I heard was very clear. What I heard every night was somebody speaking to me, Matthew 11, 28. Well, I did not know it was a Bible verse because I've never even touched a Bible in my life before that. When I told this to my mother-in-law that I'm hearing a voice and this is what I heard, she immediately told me, hey, God is speaking to you. Jesus is speaking to you. I said, God speaking? How can God speak? That was my logic. She said, no, 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 you will realize it. And she gave me a Bible. Out of respect for her, I took the Bible, went back to my room and flung the Bible in one corner. About three weeks later, one evening, I was sitting in my room all alone. And then I noticed the Bible there and a thought came to my mind. Let me find out, is there something called Matthew 11, 28 there? So I opened the Bible. Matthew, I could make out. When I opened the Bible, I went to the index and I found something called as Matthew. And what is this 1128? So I opened the Bible, went to the section of Matthew, and then I saw the chaptering there, concluded 11 must be chapter 11. And then finally, I ended up in 1128. And the scripture said, come to me and I will give you rest. Oh, that word rest is something that attracted me. And the moment I saw this word rest there in the Bible, it attracted me. And my thought went immediately. How does this person know that I need rest? Everything for me is intellectually to be applied. So I was trying to logically find a conclusion for it. So I randomly turned the Bible. So the page which I had turned had one verses highlighted there. It was Hebrews chapter 3 and verses 15. Today, if you listen to my voice, harden not your heart as in rebellion. I was thinking, whose voice? Who is speaking to me? How can God speak? Gods cannot speak. So I started reading further. 16, 17, verses 18 gave me a shock. It said, today, if you harden your heart, you will not enter my rest. That shook me. That gave me a lot of fear. Anything denying rest to me is very scary for me. When night time came, without even taking my regular medicines, I went and lied flat on the floor. For the first time in three and a half years, I slept the whole night flat on the floor without any disturbance. Next day morning when I got up, I was shocked and surprised. How did I sleep the whole night? What happened to my breathing difficulty? So morning when I got up, I was even more confused. So my ego did not allow me to go and tell this family that I read the Bible. But I remembered an old gentleman used to come to their house for prayer. And I told him, uncle, this is what happened to me. He invited to his house. He made me sit in front of the crucifix and he made me read Isaiah chapter 53. You know, the first three verses says, Here is a man, no form or majesty, rejected by everyone. Nobody wants to look at his face. Well, I looked at the crucifix and straight away rejected Jesus Christ. I cannot accept this man hanging on the cross as God. My gods are all beautifully decorated, looking nice. So straight away I rejected Jesus Christ. But then, when I started reading verses 4, 5, 6 and 7, he was telling me, give me your sickness. He carried my sickness, my infirmities. I said, who is he to carry my sickness and my infirmities? When medical science cannot help me, when my faith cannot help me, what can this man do to me? So I told that uncle, uncle, I will find the truth. He told me just one word. He said, Yes, I want you to find the truth. Well, I initially thought all I had to do was open my own scriptures, the Vedas, and show it to people to prove that I'm correct. But that's when the trouble started. 
when I opened my own scriptures, I found many things written there and what we are practicing is contradicting. A lot of questions I had. Now my focus shifted from Jesus to finding certain truth, not able to connect between what we are practicing and what's written. That's when my search for it went deeper and deeper. Many truths came to me from that. But strangely, many of these truths were pointing towards Jesus Christ. From the Vedas, I came to know that only the sacrifice of God can take away the sins of a man. It was mentioning that nothing a man can ever do, no good actions of man, no sacrifice of man. In short, nothing a man can ever do can save him except the sacrifice of God. That changed my focus on my search completely in a different direction. Now my focus shifted on finding that God who has sacrificed himself for the sake of a human being. That gave me a clear indication that Jesus is the only Lord and Savior. There are many other things that I learned from that regarding karma. What is karma? That we need to face the consequence of what we have done. I thought, if I have to face the consequence of what I have done, where's the need for a God? When I read the Bible and came to know about Jesus Christ, I found a God who is ready to take upon himself all the consequence of my sinful life. Remember, now what I read in Isaiah 53 made sense to me. He has taken our infirmities. He was wounded for our transgression. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole. The concept of karma was being taken by Jesus Christ and there was a liberation for humanity. And seven, eight months down the line, I accepted Jesus as my only Lord and Savior. I got baptized in the Catholic Church. The day I got baptized, it's almost 27 years now, my sickness left me. It is 27 years now, I have not got this back even for a single day. Then I understood the power of what Christ spoke. He has taken my infirmities and he has borne my sickness. The day I got incorporated into the life of Christ, he took away my sickness and he has not given it to me. Then I also got married to the same girl in the Catholic Church. A lot of difficulties in the family. The usual problems we face in an interreligion marriage was there. But finally, we were able to convince them for the marriage. So they agreed for the marriage, my parents. But the baptism part, they did not know. It was done in secret. The problem started there. One month after all this is over, I am transferred back to my hometown, Chennai. Now I have to go and live with a group of Brahmins as a Christian, as a Catholic. For the next six, seven months, our faith was all in secret behind closed doors. But the Lord was prompting me through my wife to go and speak to my dad one day that Jesus is God and Savior. So one evening, mustering up all the courage, quietly I went and told my dad that Jesus is God and he accepted it immediately. I was so happy. Great relief for me. But the next day morning, the same thing, pujas are going on in the house. When I asked him, he said, one more God is not at all a problem. Jesus is also God. The moment we proclaim Jesus as the only Lord and Savior, a lot of challenges we face in the family. A lot of persecutions, difficulties, Next six, seven years, we had a lot of challenges, a lot of persecutions, but God, Jesus was holding us together. And slowly, six, seven years later, many family members started accepting Christ. Friends, relatives, neighbors, so many people started accepting Christ. 
we became a witness to many people to come to Christ. But then, since we were becoming a witness to many people, problems started multiplying for us. So on one hand, there were conversions then, people accepting Christ. On the other hand, difficulties and persecutions were increasing. So since the difficulties were increasing, the children were also facing a lot of difficulties. So we as a family took a decision to move back to Bangalore. The seasons change, but I'm stuck in this pattern. In the month of March 2006, we came to Bangalore. Then I had to apply for jobs. So my wife suggested me, before you join work, why don't you attend a residential retreat? I've never attended a residential retreat in my life before that. So she told me, there's a retreat center here. Why don't you attend a retreat before you take up your job? So I attended a retreat. You know, the retreat was to begin on Sunday evening, on a Sunday evening. The Thursday before that, since we had moved in, and I had just come in that week, a lot of these empty carton boxes were there. So I was on the lift. I was on the loft rather. And my wife was giving these boxes to me to be arranged there. I slipped from the loft and fell down and broke my back. So I thought I will not attend the retreat. If I have to straighten up, it takes about half an hour for me to straighten up. That was my situation. And I also thought, if I miss this retreat now, I may get, never get a chance later. So in this difficulty, I decided to attend the residential retreat. My wife went in, registered my name, she put the luggage in the room allotted to me and she came back and told me, your room is in the second floor. Then she told me, the retreat is in the third floor. And then anyway, spur of the moment, I said, it's okay, I'll go. It took me an hour to climb up the three stories and reach the retreat hall. That was the pain I was in. I went and entered the retreat hall. Right behind was a pillar. I just held that pillar and was standing there. Within two minutes, I was completely healed and became straight. I don't know how miraculously it happened. Then I had a wonderful retreat, made everything, testified to my healing in that retreat, and came back home and started calling up these companies. And all of them told me, don't join anywhere else, we want you, but we need to formally arrange an interview and the process has to go in a formal way. So I was waiting for their call. One week, two weeks, three weeks, they're not calling me. Anyway, I took this as an opportunity for me to strengthen my faith. I started attending this retreat center every day and strengthening my relationship with Christ. Then the priest was there. He said, you're coming here every day. If you have any charisms, can you help us? I had only one charism. I said, I can pick up the chairs and arrange everything. That's all I had. And I started doing that helping them in arranging the chairs, cleaning up a little bit. I began my ministry like that. Anyway, my transformation from an Orthodox Brahmin to a Catholic had already taken place. This weight was going on for six months, seven months. My bank balance was coming down. I had to provide for my family. So these tensions were growing in me. The retreat center priests were praying for me. One day, a Malayalam retreat was happening in the retreat center. It was a growth retreat for people who are in ministry. A group of gifted counselors had come from Kerala to help the retreatants. So father took that opportunity to call them and pray for me to find out if this is a revelation from God. When they started praying for me, there was a very clear message from them that God is calling me for a full-time ministry. I told the priest, it cannot for me for me because I don't know anything. But then he told me, I also know that you don't know anything. But the problem is, this is a message from God. We need to respect it. That is the reason there's a block in his getting the job. That is not God's plan for him. He's been chosen to proclaim God's word. This is a clear message. On the 16th of January, 2008, I will be preaching from the altar in that center. 
well, I forgot it, about it. We had so many things to do. A lot of things were going on. Still trying for my job. Nothing. Meanwhile, the priest told me, sit and pray. The Lord will reveal the truth to you. I started spending time before the Blessed Sacrament and praying, praying. Then, three months down the line, one fine day, I took this decision. Lord, if it is you who's calling me for full-time ministry, I don't know what to do. I do not know anything in the ministry. I don't know how to support my family. But if this is your will, I accept it, Lord. There used to be an everyday Saturday convention in the center. One Saturday afternoon, a preacher was supposed to come and preach. Did not turn up. The session was from 2 to 3 in the afternoon. 1.45, the director calls me and says, this person is not coming. Why don't you go on the stage and share your testimony? Sharing the testimony was not difficult for me, as was more of my conversion testimony. So I, yes, Father, and I went and shared my testimony that day. When I finished the testimony and came down, the priest called me and said, Raghu, do you remember something? Today is the 16th of January. This was the day that the God had revealed that He's going to use you here. We did not realize it. That was another confirmation for me. Slowly, I had the confidence to start preaching. It's almost now 12 years. I'm there going around the world, proclaiming God's message. So I continue my journey with Jesus Christ, doing full-time ministry of proclaiming God's word, along with the Vincentian Fathers at Logos Retreat Center, and wherever the Lord takes me to proclaim His word. I thank God for giving me this grace and opportunity to know the true Savior and also proclaiming Jesus as the only Lord and Savior with the confidence and conviction that I have in me through this experience of mine. And my journey will continue till I meet my Savior in that beatific vision one day. All glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Are you searching for purpose of life? <laughs> Discover your true identity. Stay tuned to Shalom World.